okay, this is either five or six to what if Deku was the god of war. The last part I recorded later or earlier in the day, and I'm just trying to spam y'all with videos today, so I'm trying to record as many parts as I can, and I should just be focusing on one anime at a time, but that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm going to start focusing on god of war right now. So, the, what the parts I'm saying probably aren't right. Anyway, the last part, we recorded the USJ arc. And since everyone except Aizawa was hurt a little bit, he wasn't hurt as much as he was in the anime because Deku got there quicker. But the Noma was, uh, the Noma was killed by Deku, which Shigaraki even said before Deku killed it that it was... Uh, that it was uh, designed to that it was designed to kill All Might, and before Shigaraki and them left, he said, "No fair, no fair. They cheated. It was designed to defeat All Might. It had shock absorption. We should have counted for some type of cutting." They said they should have tried to get some type of cutting resistant cork, and I don't think there is any type of cork like that. Anyway, so in this part, we will be going over the USJ during the. T Three weeks, I think, of training, or two weeks. Basically, during the weeks of training, Deku does mostly muscle training, so he can use more one for all. By the end of it, let's say, since he was at 40, he can use about 50. And his flames and ice have gotten even stronger. And what else? Let's say... Yeah, that's about it. So we go to the... We go to the sports festival. In the sports festival, let's say Todoroki already knows he's outclassed by Deku and he needs to train. And during, let's say during the race, Todoroki freezes everyone. Doesn't really help. Let's say Deku can shoot ice or fire from all over his body. So yeah, he can shoot ice from all over his body or fire from all over his body so with the moment Todoroki freezes things Deku uh, did his fire basically so he shot little bits of fire and like on his feet to unfreeze him and then did a 10% full cowling run which is way faster than what Deku was and he's already let's say he's past the robots at this point and he's already at the Grand at the canyon and since the weapons are part of his quirk he doesn't use to register them he just needs to summon them and and let's say Deku's at the cannon and he does a 10 a 5 percent not a 10 percent jump into the air making it about halfway to the or halfway over but he thinks he might not make it but he will just barely but he thinks he might not so what he does is he gets out his Chaos Blades, or Blades of Chaos, I forget what they're called, but anyway, he gets out the Chaos Blades, he starts spinning them, and throws them into the ground, and pulls himself closer, putting the blades away. This is when President Mike's, President Mike asks what Deku's quirk is. Aizawa says that his quirk's a bit confusing, and he actually never gave a name for his quirk, he just says that he has... Uh, multiple abilities for his quirk. He has two different types of enhan enhancement abilities. He can summon weapons, or he has a pocket dimension, which he can summon three items, or any items that he has in the pocket dimension. All it needs is a special symbol on it. He has... He does have a regular... He says that he has a regular, like, he has... He's stronger than what a normal person would be at his age. But the stronger his normal body is, the stronger he is, and that's why he's so buff. Uh, he says that the two weapons that he has in there is a axe called the Leviathan Axe and the blades, and two blades called the Chaos Blades. And for some reason, I keep saying Chaos Blades, and I'm Chaos Blades, and I'm thinking that's not the name, and I'm pretty sure they're not for some reason. I might be saying the wrong name, I might be saying the right name, I'm sorry for some reason, I think I'm saying the wrong name, I'm going to keep saying Chaos Blades, he's said called the Chaos Blades, he says the axe is, has a frost element, so Deku, uh, he says Midoriya, if he was to use the axe, he can envelop the body of it with ice, and the blades are fire, and he can use the fire and ice uh, without the weapons, 
He mostly uses the weapons to help with movement, like the blades. He said during uh, he said uh, all the teachers at UA saw this how uh, how he how easily he used his weapons to scale a building, which the weapons are not normally made, so they have they're a lot sharper and durable. He, he says that they were easily able to pierce through concrete and that might also be because how strong he is. He was able to scale a building with those. Then Mike says, you said he has two type of enhancements. Aizawa says, yes. What, what are the two types of enhancements he does have? And uh, Aizawa says that he has a strength enhancement and speed enhancement. Uh, ability which in stre uh, increases his strength and speed which he can control he still he says that the stronger his body is the stronger he is with both the enhancement and his strength because his strength is more intent like it's more uh, it's basically has a sh so much he has superhuman strength basically he has super strength because how how muscular he is and the stronger his body is, the stronger, or the more effective his enhancement. And uh, the other enhancement he has is mostly strength, but it does have a regeneration factor, the where he does have extreme regeneration, but he uh, the regeneration is more. It's like even more powerful with the other uh, enhancement. Mike asks, "How do you tell them apart?" He says that there are. Uh, there's like little uh, red lightning. Is it red or green? He says there's like lightning going around uh, Midoriya when he uses the speed and strength one. And that there's like sparks, like uh, like uh, fire sparks basically coming off of his hands when he uses the uh, other uh, the other enhancement. He only he says he's only able to use it. He's only able to start using it sometimes. But it mostly comes out when he's angry, and it enhances his physical strength by uh, a lot. Uh, Prison Mike asks if Midoriya is the top of the class, the strongest, or uh, what is his ranking in the class. Aizawa says he is at the top. Yes, he is strong, but he's also really smart. He does not just focus on uh, getting stronger to become a hero. You also need to be smart to become a hero, and he is at the top of the class. And we skip back to the race. Deku at this point has gotten to the mines, and he's wondering what he should do. People are starting to catch up. He thinks he should use a thirty percent. Uh, no, he thinks he should use thirty percent run for one for all. He says that might be too fast because he might just go right over the. Uh, he says he might just go right over, he's thinking he might just go right over the mines, and everyone could just get through there with no challenge. He thinks, no, I can't do that. So instead, what he does is he gets out his Chaos Blades, and he starts spinning them. Everyone's wondering what he's doing, why does he just run? And he throws them, and they sink straight into the wall of the arena. President Mike says that uh, he's... Uh, or Aizawa says that he's trying to evade the mines because he says that at this point he could probably run fast enough to where all the mines explode behind him. But he needs to, but he says that means there would be no challenge for anyone else. And another thing is he doesn't want to take the risk of taking damage by the explosions. So he's going to go with the easier route of pulling himself over the, uh, over the mines, which Deku does is he jumps in the air and pulls himself with the Chaos Blades, landing just barely inside the tunnel, not hitting any mines, and walking through it, getting first place. Since he got first place, everyone is against him, but he has the same team as original, but instead of being the uh, horse, or instead of being the rider, he's the horse, mainly because if he was the rider, it'd be hard for everyone to pick him up. And two, because uh, that he has a pretty good, he has pretty good ranged attacks to uh, do it uh, to basically make sure no one else can attack him. 
and Deku, instead of having the original, uh, the original plan in the first place, he says that they should just defend, and that Deku could make, basically, a little ice, uh, area, like an ice room, so the only way to get in is to break through the ice, and he can make it about a foot thick, or thicker, but it'll take time. They said that, uh, Deku says that he can make the room thinner, like the ice thinner, or thin, but he can make it thicker over time, it'll just take quite a bit of time to do so. They they decide to do the plan with the ice, and Deku starts shooting the ice, slowly turning, and basically he makes a ring of ice around them, and they ask what he's doing, and then he shoots, and then he pushes his arm out, shoots even more ice, and the wall slowly starts growing, or not slowly, quickly starts growing, and... Aizawa says that he has, they must have a strategy to just evade everything. Let's say this ice, it's as cold, it's between dry ice basically, and if you ever held that, it is really cold. It is like, really cold. It's between dry ice and liquid nitrogen, basically. So it's super cold, and that just be, and it's really hard to melt it. And let's say it's so cold that people around them can feel it. And whenever they touch it, that they immediately are in pain because of how cold it is. Because they're trying to, like, break through it. And let's say they have their hand on it too long, it immediately hurts. And let's say everyone else is just sitting in there. Let's say Deku, since he has a pocket dimension, all he needs to do is basically write the rune on something and he can keep it in there. He asks if ever, anyone wants something to drink because he... And let's say anything in the in the pocket dimension doesn't like spoil. Let's say it's like it doesn't have any time in there. It's like an infinite void of no time, basically. So you put something in there, it's gonna be in the same condition as it was when it's in there. And Deku tested this. He asked if they're hungry or thirsty because he has in his pocket dimension, uh, he's able to keep things in there and they don't go old or rot. So he has food in there. Just in case he gets hungry, he can just pull food out. They ask, what, how did he put food in there? Does it need to have a rune on it? Deku says, yes. He mostly has food that are in, like, wrappers or in bags, like, like uh, little plastic bags or containers. That all he does is put, like, mark the rune on the container or the wrapping, and it's in there. So they're just enjoying some drinks, basically, like water or soda, some tea. And they're just all in there. And... They're just drinking, and the ice goes away. Let's say the timer's out, and they can just barely hear the timer go out. And Deku breaks the ice, like he punches straight through it, making a big gust of wind, using one for all to quickly break it. It shatters. Deku picks up his drink and keeps drinking it. And everyone sees that they have drinks. Baku goes angry at this and says that they've been drinking, uh, that they've just been in there drinking drinks and eating. Where they even get the drinks from? Uh, Mike says that their plan was just to sit in there and wait for time to go out. And there, and Mike says that uh, Midoriya is quite strong because people kept trying to break through it and had no luck. And he, with one hit, broke a good portion of the ice. And not only that, they had snacks and drinks in there. Uh, Aizawa says yes. It must have something to do with Dora's quirk, because he does have a pocket dimension, which he can put basically anything in. And we don't know how the time works in there. Because if the uh, because if the blades were to sit in there, because they say that he says that on the record, Midoriya didn't unlock his quirk until a couple months ago. But if they were, but if he were to have his quirk his entire life, that the blades surely would have rusted or something. So it must just not, time must not affect anything in there. And not only that, it is cold. He could have just made it cold. And they have food that looks like it was made like that morning. Basically, they just have a bunch of stuff. And they get first place. And let's say Endeavor is intrigued by Deku because it seems like he has so many abilities. And not only that, he has fire and ice. So he's intrigued by Deku. Next, it's the battle Deku versus Shinso. It goes similar, but instead of Deku being taken over, 
he immediately, uh, after Shinzo starts insulting the other guy, runs at Shinzo with about 10% full cowling and punches him, sending Shinzo flying and making a crater in the wall. And Deku starts criticizing Shinzo, saying that you may have you can't rely on your quirk because your quirk is if someone talks, then you win. But it doesn't ma matter if someone talks because you got to remember what if someone's mute and what if someone just doesn't listen to you? What if someone's deaf? Like he just starts pointing out things that can uh, hurt Shinzo's quirk or different things that won't help Shinzo and says that you're wrong about me too. I wasn't able to use any of these powers until... Uh, about a year ago, and I trained every single day since I was about 10 just to be strong, and I wasn't even able to use my cork until about a year ago. The reason I'm so strong is because I've trained to learn how to fight, and you've just been sitting around relying on your cork, being told that you're villainous because of your cork. It doesn't matter if you're villainous. People saw my cork, which is to summon weapons and how the weapons look. They immediately, some immediately thought it was a villainous quirk because they were weapons. How can you be a hero if you use weapons? And that's what I don't make, that's what I don't think, that's it. Like, people describe quirks on how they look and all that. I mean, Shigaraki's quirk is a disintegration quirk. He could have been a great, like, a rescue hero by disintegrating, like, rubble or if someone was trapped under something, he could have just disintegrated it. And if he learned how to control it, he could have been a great hero, basically. Or the warp villain, he could have used his quirk to help get people to safety. Who else? Like, every single villain, or every single villain could have somehow used their quirks to help others, but they were just told they were villainous. And basically, that they had a horrible life. So, Deku versus Todoroki. Todoroki uses ice. Deku, uh, immediately just throws a flick of one for all and breaks the ice. It, that continues like normal, except like in their anime, except Deku's a lot buffer, of course, and he's not hurting himself. The whole thing happens with Todoroki using his fire and Deku using uh, his fire. Let's say they're both combining both fire and ice. And Deku starts using one for all, and then he starts using sparks. And Mike comments on this, saying that Deku's using both enhancements with increasing his power. Like he has sparks going around him, and then he has actually no, he has like lightning going around him, and then he has sparks coming off his hand. He's activating both of his uh, power ups basically. He's acting both both of his power ups to increase his strength and. Uh, and this is when Aizawa says, yes, it's probably because Deku or Midoriya has never seen Todoroki's fire because Todoroki has never used it before, and he doesn't know how strong it is, so he's making sure he wins. That uh, Midoriya making sure that he wins by using as much power as he has. So, I never really give Deku names. I usually just say that, like, his hero name, I usually just say that, uh, I usually just say that he chose the same name, but in this, he's getting a nice, good hero name called the God of War, basically. He's, he's going to take that name from Kratos, because he does have the powers of the God of War, he just needs to get stronger. So, uh, the next fight, uh, of course, Deku wins, he shoots his fire, so it's Todoroki, they struggle. Deku ups the percentage on one for all, slowly overpowering Todoroki. And Deku shooting the blast just high enough to where it doesn't hit Todoroki or any of the people in the sports uh, sports festival watching. Deku wins. Deku versus Bakugo. Bakugo in this. Uh, let's see that Mike uh, comments on Bakugo saying that he's quite, quite angry and seems to dislike Midoriya. Uh, Aizawa says yes. From their records, they were they've been going to the same schools their entire life. And Bakugo quite dislikes Midoriya because 
he thought he was quirkless through most of his life. And it, he found out only a year ago that he wasn't quirkless. And not only that, that he's stronger than Midori, uh, that Midori is stronger than him, and he thought he was the strongest. So, he, and uh, Aizawa says that, yes, he is quite strong, but Midoriya is on a whole other level. And Aizawa comments that saying that if Midoriya had gotten his quirk sooner, probably even just uh, a year earlier than what he did, than when he did get his quirk, he'd probably be at All Might's level because only having a year to train, not even a full year, because he says he hasn't even had his quirk for a full year, and he's already quite strong. And if he had his quirk for a whole two years, he might already be at All Might's level. But now, Bakugo always believed that he would be the number one hero, that no one could ever stand up to him, but the realization that Midoriya had a quirk, and that it's quite strong, made him realize that Midoriya is a threat, and he's always disliked Midoriya, because he thought Midoriya was weaker than him, he's, and he says that through his records, he's always been a bully to people weaker than him, acting like it's better, we skip to the fight. This video is getting too long. It's going to take like, forever to upload. It takes forever to upload. Anyway, uh, we get to Bonkugo Deku. Bonkugo rushes. And let's say since he realized Deku had a quirk, he trained. So he's stronger than what he is in the anime. Only a bit. And in this, Deku threw his... Uh, not threw. He had his blades out. Now let's say he just had a shield out out. Mike just comments, so he has a shield? Izawa says yes. It's usually, he says it's usually the shield and axe as a combo. You block with the shield and attack with the axe. He says you can all, he can also throw the axe and call the axe back to him, which will come flying back to him. But the blades are to be used by themselves. He says, so why doesn't he have the axe out? He says probably because the axe would most likely put permanent damage on young Bakugo, or even kill him. So he's just using the shield to help block some of the fire, but he's probably just using it to attack with. Mike says, what do you mean attack with? Aizawa says that Midoriya has quite a lot of physical strength, and that if he were to have any item, uh, like any blunt item, he could easily use it as a weapon. And that he has that shield, all he needs to do is get one good hit on someone, he could easily knock him out. And then Mike says, so you say, but it's also a weird shield. Izella says, yes, the shield is not a normal solid shield. The type of shield it is, is it's a rotating shield, he says. Basically, the shield spins, it's like a spinning mechanism, and it spins to unfold, and it makes a shield, and then it can refold to close itself. Basically, he can make a part, a partial shield, he can make half a shield, or a full shield. Basically, and we skip back to the fight, he makes a shield, Bakugo tries to go behind him, Deku just punches him, and then let's say Bakugo gets sent flying back to his side, Deku charges, Bakugo gets, just barely gets up, throws an explosion, Deku takes the explosion head on, and then hits Bakugo with the shield, everyone noticing this, Bakugo gets flung out of the arena, Deku saying that he wins, and that he is on leagues above Bakugo, and Deku gets first place in basically all of them, and I'm gonna leave it off from here, bye, I need to start uploading these, bye.